As the Jordan Peterson whisperer, I thought it might be useful to offer some criticism of the man, which is well-deserved nowadays. This is what Peterson tweeted three days ago. The UN is an evil joke, but this is what prompted him to tweet this. Decision ...to launch a siege on Gaza and deprive civilians of essential resources for survival, which is prohibited under international humanitarian law. Destruction of infrastructure and streets in Gaza has hindered the movement of civil defense and medical teams trying to reach victims. I agree the UN is largely a feckless organization, and I would accept saying the UN is evil as a hyperbolic criticism. But them asking Israel to not commit genocide, to not starve millions of people, half of them children, for Peterson to say the UN is an evil joke is so unbelievably pathetic. You want to know what an evil joke is? This is an evil joke. The BLM activists who put a picture of the paraglider of the Hamas terrorist who massacred innocent children, that's an evil joke. That is worthy of, 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 of being called sociopathic, psychopathic, and evil. Or how about the people who utterly reject everything that Jordan Peterson claims to believe about how the line through good and evil runs through everyone's heart? How about this evil joke of propaganda that's being fed to us? In the media, there is a war between good and evil. And Israel's battle is your battle as well, because there is a lot of misinformation, a lot of hate, blind hate, anti-Semitism, and lies. We all have to fight it together, so I call you to stand on the right side of history, take a stand, a bold stand for Israel, and together we are going to win this war. There is an information war, and it does sound like there's good and evil involved. And you know what sounds evil to me? Collective punishment of an entire ethnic group, like this. We are working, operating militarily according to rules of international law, period, unequivocally. It's an entire nation out there that is responsible. It's not true. This rhetoric about civilians not, we're not aware, not involved, it's absolutely not true. They could have risen up. They could have fought against that evil regime which took over Gaza in a coup d'etat. But we're at war. We are at war. We are at war with at our, we are defending our homes. We are protecting our homes. You don't win a war by starving half a million children. The, the idea that you can target an ethnic group with a collective crime, regardless of the specific innocence or guilt of the constituent elements of that group, there is absolutely nothing that's more racist than that. And this rationality, so it went from Hamas is evil because they use civilians as human shields to now it's an entire nation. The nation elected Hamas. So they're all guilty in this. I really feel sorry for uh, the suffering of uh, the people of Gaza, but we should all remember they elected Hamas 18 years ago. Hamas is the only one responsible for everything that is happening there. Hamas embedded uh, its terrorist infrastructure within the civilian population under uh, public uh, facilities. And there's no other way to eradicate Hamas terrorist capabilities and ensure that these atrocities would not happen again without without eliminating it. So if Hezbollah invades Israel from the north and wipes out a ton of Israelis, what, what's their rationale going to be? Well, hold on. It was, it was the entire nation that elected Netanyahu, the mobster Netanyahu, the war criminal, and who's buddy-buddy with Jordan Peterson and Ben Shapiro. The entire nation elected Netanyahu, which is p partly true. It's a parliamentary system they have over there. But if Hezbollah kills thousands or tens of thousands or hundred thousands of innocent Israelis, good Israelis who do more for the Palestinians than most of the psychopathic freaks in America who are chanting free Palestine while they're waving fucking paraglider stickers to justify the killing of innocent Israelis. If Hezbollah kills all those people that were actually doing good for the Gazans there in Israel, they'll say, well, hey, look, those Israelis, they should have risen up against Netanyahu and done a coup d'etat. It's collective punishment. There's a siege going on in Gaza. All the water and electricity is cut off. So all the kids in hospitals, they're all, what, just dead? The number of children who are dying is rising. We're about to witness mass atrocity committed by Israel on a scale much larger than what happened to them. But no, no. The international community asking Israel to not utterly commit fucking genocidal war crimes. 
That's an evil joke. And this, if anything, is sparking a re-examination of the degree to which Zionist ideology, religious Zionism in particular, has any credibility. I think it's in the interest of the United States and everyone in the West to stop backing Israel. We can supply them rockets for their Iron Dome, but under no circumstance whatsoever should we be sitting here and saying we support Israel no matter what as they commit war crimes. I want to show some reasonable takes that you probably won't see from Peterson while he's getting dinner with Netanyahu. The Israelis would say, well, look, you know, we are defending ourselves. We are targeting <coughs> Hamas targets in Gaza. We are trying to put an end uh, to what we believe is a terrorist organization once and for all. Do you really keep a straight face when you say that? Do you think terrorist organizations embedded in populations who are denied their most basic rights are ended once and for all in a military campaign? Does that happen in history? Can someone credibly tell me that when the leadership of a country says we are cutting off food, electricity, water, all supplies to an entire civilian population, that they're targeting militants? I'm sorry, these kind of lies can't be allowed to pass. And when you tell yourself the lie, it leads to the wrong policy. If anyone told me <clears throat> that what the militants did on the weekend was a legitimate response to years and years of occupation, I would say, no, you're wrong-headed. You've lost sight of humanity and reality. And if anyone tells me that what Israel is doing in Gaza today is a legitimate response to what happened on the weekend, it's exactly the same. And yet they are saying it, and yet the international community is yes, saying and that. Yes, and people need to challenge them on it, because it's a lie, and we're warmongering if we allow them to get away with it. And perhaps the single most level-headed, admirable, person that I've heard talk about this issue is someone I've admired for a very long time, someone who's the opposite of Jordan Peterson in many ways, a clinical psychologist, Gabriel Matei. Holocaust survivor as an infant. I barely survived. My, my, my grandparents were killed in Auschwitz and uh, most of my extended family was killed. I became a Zionist. This dream of the Jewish people resurrected in their historical homeland and the barbed wire of Auschwitz being replaced by the boundaries of a, of a Jewish state with a powerful army. And then I found out that it wasn't exactly like that, that in order to make this Jewish dream a reality, we had to visit a nightmare on the local population. I visited the occupied territories, Russell, during the first intifada, I cried every day for two weeks at what I saw. The brutality of the occupation, the petty harassment, the murderousness of it, or cutting down of Palestinian olive groves, the denial of water rights, the humiliations. And this went on, and it's much worse now than it was then. It's the, long, it's the longest ethnic cleansing operation in the 20th and 21st centuries. So then you have these miserable people packed into this horrible, people call it the world's largest outdoor prison, which is what it is. You don't have to support Hamas policies to stand up for Palestinian rights. That's a complete falsity. If you take the worst thing you can say about Hamas, multiply it by a thousand times, and it still will not meet the Israeli repression and killing and dispossession of Palestinians. Anybody who criticizes Israel is an anti-Semite is simply an egregious attempt to intimidate good non-Jews who are willing to stand up for what is true. And I really wish that, that, that non-Jews of goodwill would, would stand up against the calumny and not be intimidated by this charge of anti-Semitism. I really wish that. So it's not a question of being pro-Palestinian. It's a question of, are you, to, are you in favor of justice and, 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 and liberty and, 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 and freedom and, and, and truth, or are you not? I really hope Peterson steps back, examines the relationships he has, and realizes, you know what, as a person by his own admission who's very agreeable, who's very inclined to reciprocate hospitality, which is a manipulative tactic often to have a mobster like Netanyahu fly you out for dinner, bring you to Israel. Today is October 14th, and I don't think we've, we've even begun to see the extent of the atrocities that are about to be committed. So we'll see. Good luck and Godspeed, everyone.